Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. We all know that this GPU generation kind of sucks, but at the very least has been a disappointment for many buyers. High graphics card prices, stagnation in the mid to lower parts of the range, and a few puzzling releases with nonsensical MSRPs. Today we're going to look back across the last four generations of graphics cards to show exactly why this generation has underwhelmed and by how much, while also correcting the lineup to show what each GPU actually should have cost. There are lots of different types of GPU buyer and everyone upgrades their GPU at a different rate. Some people are satisfied upgrading every three generations while others want an upgrade every generation. We recently polled our Hardware Unbox podcast audience and found that around 40% of you like to upgrade every two generations, about 30% every three generations, 10% every generation and the rest choosing other options. With such a range of upgrade cadences, everyone has different expectations for the performance of a new product and what is acceptable. Someone that upgrades every generation will be satisfied with a much smaller improvement over their current GPU compared to someone upgrading every three generations. Ultimately, if a new GPU ends up satisfying the broadest range of PC gamers, hitting that sweet spot performance uplift for both frequent and less frequent upgraders, the better and more successful a generation will be. We asked you when buying a new GPU how much performance you are after at the same price and filtered this by how often you said you upgrade your GPU. For the people who upgrade every generation, the most common answer was wanting at least 30% more performance. When upgrading every two generations, the most common answer rose to at least 50% more performance. And for those who upgrade every three generations, the majority wanted double the performance. This sets the standard for what a new GPU should be providing to buyers, at least those in our audience. It means that an NVIDIA RTX 40 series graphics card, for example, should be offering about 30% more than the 30 series, 50% more than the 20 series, and double the performance of the 10 series without any price increase. Exceed this, and you've got a great product from an excellent generation, fall under this mark, and it's unlikely to see significant demand, and people are probably going to call it pretty crap on Reddit and in our YouTube comments, which is exactly what we've seen this generation. Knowing what our audience wants, we can now test each GPU generation against this. To do so, I created a normalized performance per dollar index based on our performance testing over the years. As people are after 50% more performance every two generations at the same price, we have to account for NVIDIA and AMD changing up the pricing structure over time, hence performance per dollar instead of raw performance. If GPUs offer more but cost more over time, that should be counted against them. However, what also needs to be factored in is inflation, so I've run the numbers both including and excluding inflation. For example, the GeForce GTX 1060 6GB cost $250 US when it launched back in July of 2016, but that was $2016. In 2024, $320 $320 has the same purchasing power as $250 did nearly 8 years ago, according to the US Consumer Price Index. With everything we've just been talking about factored in, we get this graph, so let's explain it before we get going. Each chart uses graphics cards from the 2016 to 2017 generation as the baseline. The lower blue line is the performance uplift needed each generation to satisfy at least 50% of the respondents to our survey, while the upper blue line is the uplift to satisfy at least 80% of the respondents. For example, 55% of people who upgrade every generation selected an option between 0 and 30% uplift, so an upgrade of at least 30% would satisfy those buyers, while 88% of people upgrading that often selected an option between 0 and 50%. Also on this chart we have the performance per dollar information, with inflation factored in as the darker green marks, while the data without inflation is the lighter green marks. You'll see that pricing information listed below the chart as well. Here what we're looking at are NVIDIA GPUs priced around $250 to $300. Coming from the GTX 1060 6GB, the GTX 1660 was around the mark of a good performance per dollar increase. After that, the RTX 3050 was a bit underwhelming, only satisfying upgraders after factoring in inflation and only if you could actually get it at $250. For most of its lifespan, after the cryptocurrency boom ended in late 2022, the 3050 was actually more like a $280 to $290 card, making it even less attractive compared to the 1060, as you can see by how far below the blue lines some of those dots are. 
However, when it comes to the RTX 4060, it actually offers a reasonable performance per dollar increase over the 1060 6 gigabyte for those upgrading every three generations, as it's more than twice as fast. With each generation comes new expectations for future generations, so let's reset the blue line markers to match what a GTX 1660 owner would need to be satisfied with an upgrade. Here the RTX 4060 is still reasonable, though only when factoring in inflation. And similar can be said for people looking to upgrade from an RTX 3050 after a single generation. What has been really underwhelming over the last decade has been the improvements in the $200 to $250 range. Not only is there not a single RTX 40 series product in that price range, but each generation since the GTX 1063GB has significantly underwhelmed. The GTX 1660 was only a 20% performance per dollar increase with inflation, and the RTX 3050 sucked. At such a mainstream price point, it's very disappointing to see the lack of improvement over time. When looking below $200 US, Nvidia has continued their trend of offering terrible products in this price range, but surprisingly, they've actually kept pace, offering roughly the same level of terribleness each time. For GTX 1050 Ti owners, both the GTX 1650 and RTX 3050 6GB have been around the mark of a good upgrade. However, if you are the owner of the GTX 1650, the RTX 3050 6GB looks a lot less appealing as an upgrade, though it's not awful. At around $350 to $500 US, this is where things get really interesting. For owners of the GTX 1070, we can see that the RTX 2060 was bordering on acceptable, but without inflation, a little underwhelming. Then came along the RTX 3060 Ti at a similar price point, a slam dunk win here for most people if you could find one at $400 US. With a performance per dollar improvement of over 80%, this was a great product that would have incentivized many upgrades and is probably why people were desperate to get one, crypto boom aside. When looking at today's products, the RTX 4060 Ti in both capacities, it's not an awful upgrade from the GTX 1070, especially when considering inflation. So why was this generation of product poorly received? Well, the success of it isn't just based on a comparison to an 8-year-old GPU. While also a reasonable upgrade from the RTX 2060, the real kicker here is when resetting expectations based on what we got with the RTX 3060 Ti. We can now see that the 40 series is a super underwhelming release compared to what we got in the previous generation, failing to reach a reasonable performance uplift for people buying every generation. But it also affects people who have older cards. If you had a GTX 1070, a great upgrade would have been the 3060 Ti. But if you didn't pull the trigger on that Ampere GPU, you might have waited to get an even better product in the 40 series, banking on getting, say, another 30-ish percent on top of the excellent gains delivered in the 30 series. When you wait two and a half more years for an underwhelming new product, you'll either regret not buying the excellent last-gen model, or it won't be enough to change your mind on waiting. I mean, if the 3060 Ti wasn't good enough and you didn't buy it then, why settle on the 4060 Ti now? Nvidia faced similar issues with the $500 US range. This chart really highlights how bad the RTX 2070 was, falling well short of a good generational gain. But unsurprisingly, the RTX 3070 was the opposite, a hit that offered a great improvement for Pascal owners if you could get one at the MSRP. Then along comes the RTX 4070, and opinions will be highly varied depending on whether you factor in inflation or not. As we reset expectations for each generation, we can see a similar pattern. If you bought an RTX 2070, the 3070 presented as a fantastic upgrade, exceeding the gain needed to satisfy 80% of buyers. The 4070 is also not awful as an upgrade from the 2070, but relative to the 3070, if you were expecting a typical performance uplift, then it certainly did not deliver the required performance per dollar increase as we can see here. Moving now to AMD GPUs, and here we have their models around $250 US. For people that purchased the excellent RX 588GB back in 2017, it's been a mixed bag since. The RX 5600 XT was a bit underwhelming, and the RX 6000 generation depends heavily on what price you want to use. Products like the RX 6600 XT and RX 6600 had launched well into the crypto boom and had MSRP set to account for that. After the boom ended in the later stages of 2022, pricing rapidly fell to a more typical price for that class of product, which is reflected here in the post-boom numbers. It's possible those prices would have been the MSRP in a normal market, of course it's hard to say, but I've included both so you can see the effects either way. 
but basically the 6600 series would have been a huge fail at the MSRP, but with fixed pricing was actually a huge success for both the 6600 and 6600 XT, offering a decent upgrade over the RX 580. The RX 7600 also doesn't appear too bad as an upgrade choice, at least in this instance. However, when we recalibrate expectations based on the RX 6600 XT, once again we see the RX 7600 falling short. Like with the 4060 Ti and other NVIDIA GPUs, if you had skipped the previous generation expecting things to be better a few years later, that hasn't been the case. At around $300 we have the upgrades from the RX 590 through to the 7600 XT. It's similar to what we saw before, where if you were coming from either an RX 5600 XT or an RX 6600 XT, the improvement to the 7600 XT is extremely underwhelming, with the only advantage being the doubling of VRAM capacity. Mid-priced offerings are where AMD has typically been offering the best value, and that's no exception when we look across the generations. Coming from Vega 56, the 5700 XT, 6700 XT, 6800 and 7800 XT have all been great upgrade choices. Even the 6700 XT at MSRP wasn't too bad. When we reset expectations for the RX 5700 XT, again AMD has been offering reasonable improvements here, especially if you grabbed an RX 6700 XT post boom. This continues with the 7800 XT, though only when factoring in inflation. But when we look at expectations based on the RX 6800, yeah, the 7800 XT looks underwhelming. Then we have the $600-ish products, Vega 64 was a pretty underwhelming release back in 2017, so it's no surprise to see the RX 6800 and RX 7900 GRE offering huge improvements. But again, if we reset expectations to the 6800 series post boom, the 7900 GRE isn't really cutting it as far as a generational uplift is concerned. For lower tier products around $200, AMD hasn't dished up as much trash as Nvidia has and hasn't been too bad at following a reasonable uplift with each generation. Relative to the RX 570, the RX 6600 at its post boom price of $220 is quite an attractive GPU, though the counter to that is the RX 6500 XT, a closer match when not factoring in inflation, and that was a shocker in terms of value. And of course right now there is no 7000 series product in this price range, with AMD effectively just continuing to sell the RX 6600. Now let's combine the generations from AMD and Nvidia so we can determine where pricing needs to be. In the $200 to $300 market, upgrading from an RX 580 or GTX 1060 to a latest generation product isn't the worst move, although clearly the better move would have been grabbing an RX 6600 XT at around $300 or less a few years ago. If you grab the RX 5600 XT back in early 2020, again, not much price correction is needed to make the latest generation appealing, but as you can see here, the RX 6600 XT reset many expectations that the latest generation fails to reach. Based on this data, to satisfy the widest range of upgraders and provide a typical improvement, the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 should have been priced around $250 US. The 7600 XT and its larger VRAM buffer I think can justify around a $40 premium, putting it at $290, though this does impact performance per dollar. At this pricing, anyone on a 1060 or 580 would have a clear incentive to upgrade if they didn't pick up a 6600 XT. It would also satisfy a clear majority of GTX 1660 or 5600 XT owners, and it wouldn't have been a disappointment coming from the 6600 XT. If both were priced around $230, it would have been an even bigger success. For mid-range models, around $500, as mentioned previously, the RTX 3060 Ti and also the RX 6800 Post Boom offered great value for people upgrading from the GTX 1070 or Vega 56. However, with the introduction of the excellent RX 5700 XT, expectations did change. The 3060 Ti was still a good improvement, but these days only the 7800 XT after factoring in inflation looms as a reasonable upgrade, the 4060 Ti 16GB falls short. Then if we look at expectations based on owning an RTX 3060 Ti, the 7800 XT is doing just enough only when factoring in inflation, while the 4060 Ti is well short of the mark. To present awesome value and a must-buy upgrade, the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB should have been priced at $370 US, which is a massive drop relative to its $500 MSRP. 
Meanwhile, the faster 7800 XT could have improved its attractiveness with a $40 price drop to $460. This would have made these $400-ish options a great buy no matter the generation. If you owned a 5700 XT, 2060, 3060 Ti, or an RX 6000 series product, these new cards would have sealed the deal quite comfortably and been easy to recommend. It would have also prevented disappointment relative to the 30 series, which reset expectations upwards after being an excellent release. We can see similar with the 4060 Ti 8GB and 7700 XT. These models are only standouts coming from the 5700 XT when we factor in inflation and offer a mediocre improvement over the 30 series era. The 7700 XT should have been priced at just under $400 US, while the 4060 Ti 8GB with its limited VRAM capacity should have cost no more than $300 US. This is also based on our survey results where just 14% of respondents said the maximum they'd pay for an 8GB GPU was above $300. At these prices, I think everyone is happy. The upper mid-range is also very similar to what we just looked at. After two generations offering great buys around this price point, with the 5700 XT and RTX 3070 in particular, the latest generation isn't much of an improvement, though it does start in a better position than the 4060 Ti for example. With that said, after two strong generations, these models fall short of expectations. To be a solid buy, both GPUs should be priced around $500 US. The 7900GRE is the faster graphics card, but these charts only take into account rasterization performance, and as we move up the product stack, features like ray tracing and upscaling become more important. So I've given the 4070 a more premium position in this chart, though still at a level to satisfy owners of older models. And lastly, I've got the neglected $200 market. As things stand right now, one of the few generally well-priced graphics cards is the RX 6600, which continues to be available around $190 US. This model offers a strong upgrade over the GTX 1050 Ti and RX 570, and has done so for at least 18 months. However, if we consider that the 6600 appears to be AMD's current generation offering in this range, we really should be getting something a little better at this point. To fix up the lower parts of the market, the RX 6600 would be an even better purchase and offer a new generation type of uplift with a cut to $170 US. Meanwhile, the recently released RTX 3056 GB, which is much slower than the RX 6600, that model should drop to around $110 and be the entry point to the market for PC gamers. With these prices, there should be something for everyone and more people would be incentivized to upgrade. So to summarize, when factoring in what a wide variety of buyers want, and to make the current generation as attractive as the better generations in prior years, here is what the lineup should have looked like at launch, up to the mid-range. The RTX 4070 should have debuted at $500 US instead of its $600 price point, and that should have been matched by AMD with the 7900 GRE. The 7800 XT should have come in at $460, Though this is one of the smallest discounts compared to its actual MSRP, indicating it was one of the better price models without being outstanding by any means. Around $400, we should have the 7700 XT going up against the RTX 4060 Ti 16GB with the Nvidia model at $370. Below that, at $300, it should have been a battle of the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB and RX 7600 XT. The 4060 Ti being the faster model with less VRAM, the 7600 XT being slower with more VRAM, giving buyers an interesting predicament depending on their preferences. Below that, at $250 would be the battle between the RTX 4060 and RX 7600, then rounding it out we should have last generation GPUs offering a solid entry point to PC gaming, with the RX 6600 at $170 and the RTX 3056 GB at $110. As it stands right now, even when factoring in inflation and the generally higher prices for all goods compared to a few years ago, most current generation GPUs are indeed overpriced by $50 to $100 US compared to expectations set in previous years and what consumers want in terms of performance uplift per generation. Of course, none of this is news really. At this point, Everyone kind of knows this GPU generation sucks, and there's not a lot on offer here, plenty of products have been underwhelming, but at least for me it's been interesting to visualize the data in this way, and I hope you all have found it similarly interesting. What's also been fascinating to see is how a lot of current generation graphics cards are decent upgrades for people on two or three generation old models, at least on face value. It's pretty likely that a lot of prices have been set specifically based on this information. 
However, what it fails to account for is that expectations reset after each successive release. If one generation is especially good in terms of value, buyers aren't just going to accept stagnation or a backward step the next generation. Enthusiasts in particular are pretty clued into these sorts of things and will reject the trash quickly and easily. Let me know in the comments whether you want to see more of this type of data. Should I look at the higher end of the market? Should we use this information to show what the RTX 50 and RX 8000 series need to provide in terms of performance per dollar? Anyway, let me know. That's it for this one though. If you do appreciate the sort of testing and analysis that we do here at Hardware Unbox, then please consider supporting us directly via Patreon or Float Plan. Links to those are in the description below and you'll gain some access to cool benefits like our monthly live streams, our Discord chat, which is a great place to chat about all the latest releases and tech and stuff. And we've also got BTS content, plenty of good stuff. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.